Okay, so far our signal is holding out here, and so far looking pretty good. Well, almost anyway, getting some relatively good signals for right now. If you are just joining us, this is the backyard of House Onik, and things are again looking pretty quiet for the time being, but we have a lot of stutter stepping going on at this time, so we could be seeing again the possibility of some more problems into and around the area for tonight, so we'll do our best to get a pretty good signal out to you, if at all possible. So if you are just joining us, thank you very much. Pardon the different seeds and stuff dropping uh, from the ceiling at this time, but we're outdoors for tonight. Haven't been outdoors for a while. It's a beautiful evening for that, so doing our best to keep everybody updated where it comes to things involving weather across the Mid-South area. Going to be taking a look at what's going on into and around the area where it comes to our forecast, which holds some pretty good weather for us, not quite so much as we look into and around the area of the next couple of days down toward Florida in that location. We're seeing again uh, better possibilities of some problems out that direction. Testing one, two. I think we have a microphone for uh, Facebook for tonight, which is a nice thing to have. And so far, it looks like everything is holding well on Facebook. So we'll go ahead and say welcome to everybody. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from House Onik Backyard. And as of right now, things are looking decently quiet for the Mid-South, but probably not so much into the near future as we take a look into and around what's going on with Florida. If you haven't seen anything going on down that direction, not exactly good news taking place at this time and definitely not the place to be if you are going to be going anywhere on vacation or otherwise. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Questions, concerns, ideas about the forecast, what have you got going on? Drop it into the comments section down below and we'll do our best to answer any questions. If you have questions about the hurricane, we'll do our best to answer that coming up here in just a little bit. Also about Mid-South weather and things of that nature. So again, uh, please let me know if there's anything we can do there. But we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff coming up here in just a little bit. St. Francis Cam, again, things looking pretty nice right now. Pretty quiet out there and some clearing. You take a look out toward between the horizon and the cloud deck up there. It looks like the dry air is finally starting to make its way on through. Likewise, we're getting, again, a bit of a break on the radar screen. We do have a few sprinkles showing up right into and around the area. It's kind of hard to see, again, unless you take a closer look right at the middle portion of your screen right there, and you can see a little bit more in the way of some sprinkles taking place right across portions of West Tennessee, basically right along I-40, and a few more of those showers are starting to develop right into northwestern Shelby County, right north of Millington, and that's going to be moving our direction. That's going to be about it for the rain. Some areas of sprinkles showing up into around eastern portions of Arkansas for tonight. The heavy the heaviest rainfall by far is well on down to our south, moving away from us, and will continue uh, to keep on heading that direction. So please keep that in mind, again, for the forecast for right now. So no major problems being seen across the Mid-South where radar is concerned for tonight. Let's go ahead and get into it and show you more about what's going on. If I can get this thing to work. There we go. We haven't taken a look at earthquake information in quite some time. So here's a quick look at what's going on which honestly doesn't amount to much, and I do believe we're getting a sprinkle of rainfall out here by just a little bit, but not by much. Uh, Patty Danley Bradshaw feels good in Hickory Width, right down the road from my wife's old stomping grounds of Oakland, Tennessee. Alice McGowie is for sure going up Florida's east coast. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Elizabeth Bauer, nice to see you there. Glad to help keep you informed. Sherry Fuller, beautiful night in Collierville, sounds good. And like everybody else, feel free to share our video out there and let everybody know what's going on in and around the Mid-South. New Madrid Fault has been quiet, not much of anything going on, at least nothing huge taking place, and always glad to uh, tell people about this. So good news on that for right now. Visibility shows that area of cold front coming on through the Mid-South area and just beyond. Beyond that, back to the north, got some other things happening at this point in time. Uh, seeing again some cloudy skies, but also some smoky skies as well. We've got a lot of smoke up that direction. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, lightning display showing again the heaviest amount of lightning well on down. Whoops, that was too far in that I uh, wanted to show you. So let's zoom back out a little bit on lightningmaps.org if you'd like to see take a look at this and find out more about uh, what it looks like out there where it comes to lightning displays across the mid-south got a ton of information out there really good website to go to for lightning tracking uh, most of the activity again well on down to our south and moving away from us so good news there the grayish colors that you see on screen here that is again what we're looking at in the way of smoke from all those wildfires out west from nasa earth observatory that smoke drifting out into the 
plain states. Not a lot of it reaching the Mid-South, although I have heard some reports of some smoky conditions up around Dyersburg into that area at times. So we are seeing some of that smoke with the jet stream drift into around the Missouri, Oklahoma, extreme northwest Arkansas area. So this is something that we are getting, again, a little bit of that smoke activity. Could see a little bit more of that tomorrow, depending on how far that decides to drift on down to the south. So thinking about that right there. Uh, Billy Franklin, strongest hurricane in the Atlantic. Not quite, but almost right there. And there is uh, one that is a little stronger than this one, which is which. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Uh, Mike Lonius, hope I'm saying that right, 68 degrees with mosquitoes, wherever he is located for tonight. Thank you very much for that skeetery report from wherever you are. Possibility of anything involving widespread hazardous weather is low for the next several days, right on in through next Monday, according to the National Weather Service, so things are decently quiet for here. Don't have a lot going on as that cold front makes its way even farther on down to the south and will be moving well away from us, and high pressure will be making its way on into the Mid-South as we head through Thursday and right on into Friday, so very calm, very pleasant, very dry, and nothing really major heading our direction uh, anytime soon, so definitely good news as we head into the forecast for the rest of the week. So good news for outdoor activities there. Let's go ahead and get into the forecast for later on tonight and show you more about what we're going to be looking for again through the evening hours and into tomorrow. Low temperatures, not too shabby, back into the lower to mid 50s. Haven't seen that uh, for quite some time out there. Mid to upper 50s for the metro area. Rain is basically gone from the forecast. There's really not that much out there. Temperatures tomorrow for highs back into the mid to upper 70s, looking very nice. Winds across the area should be out of the north northwest pretty much at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, Mike Lanius, I'm feeling your... Uh pain with the mosquitoes here for tonight, so my sympathies uh, on that. Heading into the rest of the forecast Wednesday night, low temperatures in the 40s around Jackson. Haven't seen those in quite some time. Lower to mid-50s across much of the rest of the area. High temperatures on Thursday back into the mid to upper 70s. Again, no chance of rainfall expected. Thursday night's lows, upper 40s around Jackson to lower 50s, and looking very nice as we go into Friday as well with high temperatures in the high 70s, pushing 80 degrees in the metro area. Low temperatures Temperatures Friday night back in the upper 50s to around the lower 60s, and temperatures for Saturday looking good. Figure a repeat performance as we head into Sunday as well, so temperatures looking uh, pretty nice out there. Caleb Montgomery, 67 in Bolivar, thank you very much. Uh, Coldwater, Mike, Mike Lonius, thank you very much for that. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, Mosquitoes in the Ville. Bozo Wolfolk, showing up again from Senatobia. Welcome to the show as usual, sir. Thank you very much. All right, let's go ahead and get into everybody's favorite subject these days, the tropics. Not one, but three storms going on at this time. Let me make certain everybody on Periscope and Twitter can see everything. Thing and they can. That's good. Looking good uh, there. We have three of them. Of course, Irma will take a full look in detail. Uh, this one, very strong, 185 mile per hour winds. Pressure keeps dropping. Winds have not changed for about the last 12 hours, but the pressure keeps going down, which means that this thing keeps getting stronger. So we'll talk about that. Jose, tropical storm well out into the Atlantic. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about a new one, Tropical Depression 13 in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Now, the good news about 13, it looks like a lucky number for us because the computer models are showing this thing looping the loop and heading back down toward the Bay of Campeche. And that's going to be, again, making its way back across, it looks like, central Mexico and making its way away from us. So, so far, Tropical uh, Depression number 13 is not a threat at this time and going well away from Houston, so good news on that. Uh, tropical Storm, let's see, is this the right map? Yes, Tropical Storm Jose, still way out into the Atlantic. Tropical Storm for now, expected to be a hurricane by 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, and could, it looks like, follow a lot of the same path as... Uh, Irma is doing, but then it's going to curve northward, so this could be a lot more of a threat to Bermuda as we go into the course of the next several days. 
after this next weekend. So good news on that and not seeing a lot of problems there. Now, of course, there is Irma, a dangerous hurricane out into the Atlantic right around the Leeward Islands. Hurricane warnings from the Leeward Islands in red all the way back to Hispaniola, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, back up toward the dry Tortugas, seeing again those warnings in place that you can see here uh, on your screen in red. Hurricane watches in effect for their parts of the Bahamas into around Cuba and down to around northwestern Haiti at this time. And so far, the storm, the M, stands for Major Hurricane. That's Category 3 and above, which as of right now, it's a Category 5, and we have not seen too many of those uh, moving their way on through. So this is, again, a very, very dangerous storm. Very strong, staying strong, going to be going over some very warm water as it goes past the Gulf Current, and that could keep it strong right about the time that it makes for landfall into and around Florida, somewhere around Sunday night into next Monday. That's going to be the main thing. This forecast graphic from the National Hurricane Center, <clears throat> excuse me, only goes out so far. It only goes out to about Sunday. Is that a government conspiracy? No. Is that just plain ineptitude on the scientist's part? No. That's how far this panel actually goes. There's a limit to how good the forecasting is, and beyond that, it really starts breaking down. What exactly are we talking about on that? We'll get to that coming up in just a little bit. Here's what it looks like. Again, Irma into the area on the left-hand side of the screen. And this thing has been, again, very much on the uh, very powerful side and will continue to be so throughout the course of the rest of the next couple of days. Meanwhile, down to the south and east of that, that is Tropical Storm Jose. This thing over here, Irma, has just been incredible to watch. Uh, absolute buzzsaw making its way through the ocean surface. The uh, inner eye has been regenerating quite nicely, and as you can see, it's a very solid structure right there, and that is something that is uh, very worrisome. If this thing has got, again, a decent amount of energy to it, we will see more restructuring out of this. That means it's very healthy. It's going to keep on going, and so we're going to see a lot more out of this one. Now, Jose is a little bit more ragged, but at least, again, it's going over some water that's already been cooled off by by Irma, so hopefully that's not going to be too much more of a problem at this point in time, but again, we will be watching that. Irma progressing nicely as it goes throughout the course of the last uh, 48 hours or so. Nice little hurricane animation here. You can see the Lesser Antilles coming in uh, into and around the area close to around the right-hand side of your screen as this loop repeats. Absolutely incredible to see this. Nathaniel Evans, welcome from Batesville, Mississippi. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, it's a beautiful thing to look at, again, if you're farther enough away from it, uh, to make certain that you're safe. Viewed from space, they're absolutely incredible. Where these things are heading, not quite so much. Again, this is going to be something that we are going to have to uh, watch very carefully as this thing approaches going on through. Now, uh, oh, also on radar, this is Puerto Rico right in the middle of your screen. And again, this is again showing the outer bands of the rain and thunderstorms moving through St. Croix, St. Thomas, and starting to make their way again right back over to the area close to, again, areas close to around Puerto Rico. So this thing is now just starting to arrive in the islands of the Caribbean, and this is going to be uh, again, the beginning of what's going to be a long few days out there. Uh, Caleb Montgomery, could Irma and Jose Fujiwara, could that be what steers Jose more north? I don't think so at this point. At least it doesn't look that way. Irma is pretty much its own animal, and it's going to continue that direction. This one from the European models, again, showing the widespread of possibilities. A couple of the computer models are actually taking this thing closer to New Orleans, but keep in mind that they are way over here on the extreme west side of the storm. There's also models that take it off the east coast. The bulk of them are going right up the middle, right over the Florida Peninsula, and that that's, again, the European model. Also, the American model, the GFS, is starting to line up quite nicely as well, going past the west part of Cuba and making a right-hand turn north right up over the Florida Peninsula, quite possibly around Sarasota, Tampa St. Pete, uh, down just north of Cuba and Key West. In fact, Key West looks to be right smack in the middle of this thing as it goes a little bit farther to the north. Doesn't look like it's a threat for us at this time. I think that cold front coming in from the north will help to keep things a little bit uh, quieter here, so good news on that. But once again, if you are going to be doing anything out there, especially going toward Florida, now the good news 
at this time is that the uh, Tigers have changed the time of the game that it is no longer going to be on Saturday against Central Florida. It's going to be Friday at 5.30 in Central Florida, and that is, again, good news so that everybody can get out of the way uh, of this very dangerous, life-threatening storm that's going to be making its way, again, through the areas around the Bahamas and into around Florida. So this is going to be something we're going to be watching again here on News Channel 3, so keep it tuned for more information on that. And, of course, the change in the computer models. There'll be a lot more of that over the next several days. A big solar storm happening right now. A coronal mass ejection happened uh, just a couple of days ago and is now heading toward the Earth. That cloud that you see coming off of the sun is a billion tons of gas and energi energized gas that basically is going to be heading toward our atmosphere. It's already doing a pretty good job of creating some blackouts on the radio spectrum. This from the Space Weather Prediction Center. And you can see some of the blackouts taking place uh, detected here over the East Pacific, most and also in the higher latitudes up into around portions of around uh, Greenland and the Arctic and down toward the Antarctic as well. Yeah, uh, Donna Kelsey Faulkner get a lot of that at this time of the night. Uh, my dogs go over to meet, greet the uh, neighbor's dogs uh, for just a little bit, so I got the uh, interesting sound effects in the background there. In the meantime, the solar storm is going to continue for a while. There could be uh, the possibility possibility of some radio interference as we just saw here but then we're also going to be seeing the possibility of maybe some auroras but unfortunately for the mid-south area it's not going to be that close the bottom portion line uh, where we see anything is that red line right there, so that's going to be the southernmost limit. More than likely not going to be seen below that yellow line, so Chicago, Gary, Detroit, Des Moines, uh, back up to around Sioux Falls, South Dakota, north around Cody, Wyoming. There may be a pretty good viewing of the aurora coming up into the next couple of days, depending on how strong the solar storm is. If you'd like more information about this, you can go to the Space Weather Prediction Center at SWPC. .noaa.gov uh, for more information. More details available again on my Facebook page, the smoke information, the hurricane information, uh, everything you just saw here on that. We'll have more details on facebook.com slash austinonicwreg and also on twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3 and also on instagram.com slash aonic underscore wreg3 uh, if you'd like to see a little bit more about what's going on there. If you'd like to get more details about what's happening with the forecast from News Channel Channel 3, all you have to do is go to uh, wreg.com slash weather and the 7 to 10 day forecast will be available right there. I forgot to mention again right here, if you've never tuned in here before, forecast available in the blue bar right there. Or again, this website is where you go to for our 7 to 10 day forecast. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio for my complete forecast. We'll have more details on what's going on throughout the rest of the week for here in the Mid-South, and then also, again, looking at what's going on with Irma and everything else out there. We're going to be keeping a very close eye as to what's happening out there throughout the next few days. That'll do it for this edition of News Channel 3's Weather Overtime from the backyard. Things are, again, very nice and quiet here, a little bit cloudy and very skeetery for this evening, so I'm going to finish up and head back inside before I get munched too much at this time. Any questions about anything, blue bar up there, austin.onic at wreg.com. I'd love to have your input, and again, send us your weather pictures. We'd love to feature them on Twitter, if at all possible, and other social media from News Channel 3. That'll do it for tonight. Thanks for joining me for a complete update of our forecast on weather overtime, and stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the week on air and online.